All right, we're recording, we're good. What's up guys, Python here, back with another video. And today we're gonna be doing something different on the channel, I guess. We're doing a current state of the New York Rangers. Uh, just pretty much what we're gonna do here. I have a bunch of tabs open with trade targets. I just don't want anyone to like a sneak peek of them. So that's why I kind of, I uh, cut it out here. But uh, we're gonna be doing, taking a look at what the lines will be potentially when they're healthy, assuming no moves are made, what trade targets the Rangers can make. We're going to also look at the statistics of what the Rangers really need to improve on, which I don't think it's a secret what they need to, but we'll dive into it. We're not going to waste any time. Uh, all I'll say is leave a like, of course, subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Ranger fans, uh, turn the notification bell if you don't have that on, but let's just dive into it. Let's not waste any more time. So the Rangers right now are sitting, uh, with 64 points, second in the Metro, 30, 13, and 4, 47 games played. So I figured this would be a good time to make the video, considering one, it's the all-star break, the standings won't move, and two, the Rangers are a two-week break, so when the standings do move, uh, you know, obviously the Rangers will see where they are after, but they should have a couple games in hand on, I don't know what Pittsburgh's schedule is looking like, I or Washington, but if they have more games coming up, uh, we'll have games in hand then on them but carolina will really get a good idea of where they are after this and if catching up to them is going to be possible because uh who the hell knows who the hell knows i don't think carolina is going to slow down i think they're gonna they might even surpass florida with the and win the president's trophy but uh yeah so let's just dive into this so the rangers are on pace to smash 100 points easily they should be able to surpass 100 points uh and they're pretty they're in a prime position to most likely either play pittsburgh or washington depending who finishes third or second or will the rangers fall to a wild card spot which would not be ideal but they could fall to a wild card spot and end up playing either carolina or uh florida or tampa which is going to be interesting the rangers right now are in a tough spot because uh obviously the most ideal would be to get that top seed but I don't know if it's going to be possible to catch up the Carolina, Florida, and Tampa. So the Rangers are pretty much in this position where they should be able to lock, they should be able to lock a playoff spot. The question is, where is it going to be? Your most ideal po opponent can't talk is definitely Boston uh, or Washington, in my opinion, just because of their shaky goaltending. So I'd say those two are definitely your. Uh, your ideal opponents, but things could change at the deadline. As we're going to mention with the Rangers, things could change with them, but we're going to dive into the analytics here just to get an idea of what the Rangers analytics are. So goals for per game. Uh, I haven't even looked at this myself. They are 16th at 3.02. That is not ideal at all. You have a, some teams that are, uh, you have a team like the blue jackets who are below us that are ahead of us. Not ideal. They definitely need to fix this problem five on five because if you look at the power play percentage, yeah, fifth in the league at 25.9. So pretty much at 26% there. They need to get better even strength. And it, that's where I said it's no secret. But if you didn't know that, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, they definitely need to get better even strength because the goals for per game is unacceptable. And most of, it, most of that is because of the power play uh i don't know if there's a way to look at this without it being with it just being even strength i don't believe so so yeah uh that's that but uh yeah the penalty kill for the rangers we are 10th at 80 uh 82.6 so the penalty kill has been falling off a bit as of late but they're still not terrible Maybe you want to get another penalty killer in there, which a bottom six forward definitely would help because Greg McKegg just can't be killing penalties and he can't stay in the lineup. I, I'm sorry, but goals against per game. The Rangers are, where are they? Find them not at the bottom. Am I? I'm just completely missing on this. Sorry about that reverse it uh oh because they are third uh they don't allow a lot of goals apparently 2.57 goals against per game so that's that's very ideal but most of that's because of igor shesterkin i'd like them to 
get the defense improved a bit, but let's also take a look at shots, uh, shots per game. The Rangers, I mean, they can't be high, right? They're getting outshot every game. They got to be like below 30, I'd imagine. Wow, we are sitting 30th in the league. Not ideal at all. Uh, yeah, the Rangers are just not shooting the puck enough. It's as simple as that. This has been a problem for God only knows how long. Also, the amount of times that they just end up passing the puck instead of shooting, especially on the power play, it's just beyond irritating. Shots against per game. That is looking like, let's sort it that way because that's the correct way. Don't know why they don't just in general, but uh, the Rangers are 19th there with 32. That, again... Uh, nitpicking, you'd like that a bit down, but it's not too bad, especially because Igor is just an animal in that, so it's not the worst. Face-off win percentage, that's another stat that I'd actually like to look at because uh, we know that the Rangers are notorious for being piss poor on face-offs. They are sitting at 48%. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. So you'd like that to improve, but uh, for after this break, we're going to go over what my ideal lineups would be. So you probably have Fox back. Obviously, he slots on the top pair. Nemeth, you... No. <laughs> nope. You get out of here. Kako, just... I could take him off IR. Put him there for now. I don't know where the hell he went. He went to defense. Nope, he's not a defenseman. Uh, Morgan Barron definitely needs to be called up. And then I'd like Jones to be back with the squad here. So... Your roster's at 25, so Jared Tenorti, you put back on the taxi squad. Patrick Nemeth, you put on the taxi squad because who the hell cares? We were high, it could be a scratch for all I care. But this is probably your ideal defensive pairs for when uh, the team is healthy. And then for your lines, um, yep, we are going to do that, that, that. Now, the bottom six is a bit tricky. Definitely want to get... Greg McKay, you could kick rocks. Yeah. Goche, I like that. Him sitting. And then... For the fourth... How do I want to do the lines here? Because... Nah, you got to put Baron on that third line. Heedle's not going to be the center, though. You could, you could pick and choose with how you would want to do this, but for me personally, I think I like this. Barkley Goudreau's play has been really good lately, so I don't know if I want to put him on that fourth line as much as I like him there. I feel like this is your ideal line to personally. You could either, you could flip flop uh, Rooney and Barkley Goudreau if you really want to, but to me personally, this is your ideal line. Sammy Blay, I'm going to put on LTIR just because... That opens up more cap space, and they probably will transfer him there, honestly, when uh, the Rangers get closer to the deadline. But, yeah, so obviously these would be your ideal lines once the break is over and you're fully healthy, but obviously we don't know if a move's going to be made. So I think that this would be this would be solid. You could do what you want. I don't know if they want to put Hedl at center and then Baron on the wing, but Baron just wins so many faceoffs that I want him at least taking the faceoffs. You could flip them around Hedl and Baron uh in terms of where they go defensively and everything as uh for their positioning, but Baron has to take the faceoffs. 100% has to take the faceoffs or Barkley Gujar should. But I guess he would probably want to do this just because Philip Heedle's more comfortable on the left wing. But, uh, yeah, so this would be your ideals. But let's dive into some potential targets. So uh, let's start with the defense. Let's start defense. So I ordered this in terms of how I want the guys. To, a, to an extent, with forwards, it's a bit different. But for the defensemen, this is exactly in order of how I would rank wanting them. First one up is John Klingberg. So Klingberg, it's not that I necessarily don't want him. It's that he is a right shot defenseman. So not really much room for him because 
Brayden Schneider is not going anywhere. And then obviously Truba and Fox are locked up there. So you don't necessarily need a guy like Klingberg. However, the power play, he will significantly, significantly improve that if you do want to get an offensive defenseman there. Uh, 23 points in 37 games, one goal, 22 apples. He absolutely is someone that you, he's someone that you would want on your, uh, on your blue line, but, uh, defensively, I'm not sure how he is. Let's just take a look at the possession metrics. Corsi. That's Corsi for Corsi against percentage just is not here. Or am I blanking? I don't even know. But let's just look at the even strength numbers. That's what I want to look at. Yeah, the Corsi four below 50. So I don't know. I don't know if he's necessarily ideal. I would probably pass on Klingberg. And it's probably going to cost too much to get him. It's probably going to be a, a first round pick and a prospect to start a deal there. Just because there's going to be so many teams in the mix. Toronto's definitely going to be in the mix there. Boston most likely will be in the mix. You have a couple other teams. I don't think Klingberg's really ideal. Next, you got Ben Sherratt. So uh, this is a guy that I don't really want. Um, but he is an option. He is an option for sure. Nine points in 41 games. Five goals, four assists. Uh, plus or minus, you could ignore that because he plays on Montreal. Montreal is abysmal this year. I believe they're the worst team in the league. Uh, here, let's just look quickly. And yep, absolutely. So, where was I? Uh, Ben Sherratt. So, even strength, Corsi 4, not ideal at all, especially considering the years prior where it was above 50, especially that 1920 season, 54.4%. He definitely has not looked good this year. And this is another guy that Montreal is looking for an absurd amount. They definitely want at least a first round pick. I'm not willing to give that up for Ben Sherratt. So we're just going to move on to the next option. And Nick Letty, this is a guy that I've been personally all over uh, and advocating for the Rangers to get because of the fact that he, what, what do the Rangers have a problem with right now? A quarterback on that second power play. Jacob Truba, sure. But they play Keandre Miller there. He's just not ideal. Nick Letty, you throw him on that power play. He is going to absolutely kill it there. He is someone that has a lot of power play experience, uh, especially with the Islanders. 12 points in 44 games. Uh, one goal, 11 assists. He knows how to drive a four check. Even strength is Corsi four. Not necessarily ideal. Uh, but again, this isn't the guy that I necessarily want the most, but this is a guy that I'd be, I'd be more interested in than Klingberg and Sherratt, because this is someone that you could get at a very, very affordable price. And he is by far an upgrade over Patrick Nemeth. Letty, you're probably looking at like a second or a third round pick for you. Definitely need them to retain some salary so you could go out and make other moves. But Nick Letty, again, not someone I'm dying to get and not someone that I'm absolutely like the Rangers have to go get that guy but he is someone that would be cheap and if they do look to make some sort of upgrade I wouldn't be against Mark Giordano so now we're getting really into there's only two left here we're really getting into the bigger names for the defensive options here so 18 points in 40 games four goals 14 assists Mark Giordano is absolutely a guy that you want he has won a Norse he is a leader, which is another big thing. He's the captain of the Kraken, and there's a reason why he was named captain of that team, despite having one year left and the Kraken not having the best roster on paper. It's because in Calgary, his leadership was absolutely unreal. His Corsi hasn't been below 50% since 2014-15. Uh, Even then, the season before that, 54.1. Knows how to uh, drive a play and lead a four check. This is a guy that you could probably also throw on your power play. Giordano is a thousand percent, one billion percent, someone that I would love the Rangers to go out and acquire. And now that I'm looking at it, I honestly feel like I want him more than the other guy that I'm going to name, which it shouldn't be a surprise who I'm going to name. But the only reason why is because of 
the prospects you have in the pipeline. Giordano, for what he's going to cost, I'm not too sure. You're probably, you might be looking at a first because of the fact that he is one of the hotter names behind the guy that I'm about to talk about. But if you do get him, you throw in a first, you probably throw in like a Tarmo Reunion or a Matt Robertson and maybe a middle-level prospect like a Carl Hendrickson or a, I'm trying to think of another like mid-level guy, or maybe throw in a guy like Julian Goche who maybe has something there. I don't know. You you have a couple options there, but the thing is, uh, no, he wasn't exposed in the expansion drive. Never mind, but I don't know. You you have options there, but he would slide so perfectly, so perfectly on that third defensive pair with Brain Schneider. I'd absolutely love Mark Giordano. So that's probably what you're looking at with a trade. But now let's get into the guy that you guys know. He his name has came up an absurd amount. That is Jacob Chikrin. So two goals, eight assists, ten for ten points in 34 games played. So the reason why he's, of course, the hottest name is because I actually share a birthday with him. Uh, he's 23 years old. He's on a super, super team friendly deal. Possession metrics, 44. You can't you can't really look at the possession metrics on a team like Arizona because what do they really have either way. But same thing was plus minus. But he was 10th in the Norse voting last year. 41 points in 56 games played. This is a guy that I'd be super interested in. You could throw him on the power play. You could throw him on the penalty kill. And he would slot in right just so perfectly on that uh, second D pair. In terms of cost, that's obviously where the question is. Uh, are the Rangers willing to cough it up? Here's my logic with why the Rangers should be willing to cough up as much as they're going to. So as much as they would have to. So you're looking at a first round pick. Okay. That first round pick, either way, you're probably trading at uh, at this year's deadline. Can't talk. Keandre Miller, you're probably throwing in. Well, Keandre Miller, you have so many defensive prospects, and he probably has the least upside, to be honest, out of every single defensive prospect. Out of Niels Longquist, Matt Robertson, he probably has more than Tarmo Rayunin in. But Chickren would slide right in that top four either way, that if you made the trade, you're fine with Zach Jones on your bottom pair. Or you could always go out and make a move for a bottom pair guy if you want. And then Vitaly Kraftsoff is probably the last guy that goes into this deal. Uh, well, he, not, probably not the last. He's probably throwing like a second also and maybe like a Carl Hendrickson, which you don't care. But you throw in a Vitaly Kraftsoff, who either way, the bridge is pretty much burnt there. If he does come back, great. But who's to say he's not going to come back, tear it up, and then request a trade? So... To me, for a guy that's not playing on your team, you're getting an upgrade on the top four. You're losing a non-roster prospect in a guy most likely like a Carl Hendrickson. And then you're losing draft picks that are magic beans at the end of the day, and you don't know what you're going to get with them. So to me, I'm all for the Rangers getting chicken if they did give something up like that. I'm all for it. But after looking at the numbers, I'm kind of more intrigued by Giordano just because one, he's going to be cheaper and two, his, uh, he might, he might resign and just his leadership and everything. There's so much to like about Giordano. There's a lot there. So that is the defense. Who are there? But that is the defense. So now we're going to get into the forward. So this is kind of an order of how I'd want them. So JT Miller. So the reason why I'm not too big on JT Miller is because there was a lot of stories that came out about how when JT Miller was a New York Ranger, he would skip practices. He'd be, he'd come in to practices drunk. He'd, uh, he would just get absolutely blasted and go to parties pretty much. So that's one thing that's kind of swaying me away from JT Miller, other than his cap hit being at 5.25 million, because Ryan Strom, you, you want to resign. You want to keep Panarin happy playing with Strom. So 
Uh, yeah, and then who's to say if he comes back to New York, he's not going to have those same issues that he had with us, which obviously we know how he was when he ended up leaving our organization. He ended up being an absolute monster. He wasn't really too great in Tampa Bay uh, in that 18-19 season, but Vancouver, he's been pretty much a point-per-game player since. I'm not too big on JT Miller, plus the price that you're going to have to give up for a guy with term. And with the teams in the mix like Pittsburgh and Boston, you're probably not going to get JT Miller either way. So would he fill a need? Yes. Uh, possession metrics. Is Corsi you absolutely love on even strength? <sighs> I don't know. His face-off win percentage too you love, but it's just that one. It's just two things for me that just sway me away from wanting him. Chris Tierney. So this is a guy... That you could get at a very, very, very cheap price. What's his uh, contract like term? Not sure. 4.2. I don't know how much he's making per year. Because that could definitely be a problem. So let's go ahead and look quickly at Ottawa. Uh, Chris Tierney. Down. He has one year left. So that is a guy that you could definitely... You could work with and you could get on retained salary. He's his face off percentage, not ideal there at all. But uh five goals, five assists in uh 40 games played for 10 points. But that could definitely increase with the Rangers. And this would be a guy that you would slot in either way as your fourth or third line center. Uh possession metrics. Corsi 4, 48.9. That could obviously improve even strength, but not bad. Not this isn't a guy that I'm absolute I would be to the moon for if the Rangers got, but definitely someone that on the lower side you could definitely go out and get. Worst case scenario, or this would be your best case scenario, actually. You get him for like a third or fourth round pick and a mid-level prospect, maybe. And then he's just uh in and out of the lineup if you have injuries. Uh speaking of a guy that I wouldn't be too excited about, but he is a guy. That is Ryan Carpenter. He wins faceoffs. That is for damn sure. Point wise, though, mm, you don't like that. But everybody raves about his defensive ability. His Corsi 4, not ideal, but he is playing on a struggling Chicago team. So, how much of it is that? Uh, I'm just realizing I forgot an obvious name with, uh, with this, which we'll get to a bit later when it's towards like where I'd probably rank him. But. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what that is, but anyway, uh, I don't know if you guys heard that notification, but anyway, um, so yeah, Ryan Carpenter, he's not a sexy name. He's not the best name, but if you're looking for a guy to kill penalties and be your fourth line center, he is definitely a guy you could go to. His points will probably go up if he comes here. They should go up especially playing with uh, Rooney and Reeves, which is probably where he'd play on that fourth line. And then Brian Hunt would definitely get out of here. He wouldn't cost a lot. So definitely an interesting name. Not the most ideal. Next, Phil Kessel. I know that a lot of people are on the Phil Kessel train. Not me personally. I'm not too big on the Phil Kessel train. And here's why. Yes, the guy stays healthy, but... The points have gone down drastically since uh, he's been in Arizona. Could that be because it's Arizona? Sure, but I I'm just not sure. Maybe he does improve if he does slot in on the right side with the Banajad and Kreider, which is probably where you'd probably... probably How many times I said probably there? That's probably where you'd put him if you go and acquire him, and it's not like he's making a lot... He would improve your power play, even strength-wise. 44, not the best, but it probably would be above 50% if he came here, especially playing with Kreider and Mika. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, there's pros and cons to Phil Kessel. The only thing is, again, I just don't know if he has much left in the tank there. But again, he wouldn't cost much, so would be a name. Next up, we actually have a bit of a wild card name here. We got Yanni Gord. So do I think there's a, a realistic world where Yanni Gord gets traded from Seattle? No, but 
But if Seattle is willing to deal, which I pro I realized I forgot another name from Seattle, my God, which will add him to the list here too. But uh, Yanni Gord, I don't think Seattle is going to deal him. But for argument's sake, they do. He would be definitely someone I would be interested in. His contract, that's where it's a bit of a problem. Making $5.1 million for the next four years would be three and a half. You'd have to get him at retained salary somehow. But if you play, if you get Yanni Gord here and you get to play him with Barker Gujo again, Morgan Barron would probably be sent down. Love the guy, but you you could definitely send him down if you get a guy like Yanni Gord in here. Well, Phil he Phil Pino might be in that deal, so it is what it is there at that point. If you package like Phil Pino, and you might have to package a first round pick to get Seattle to retain salary. Realistically, then Yanni Gord's contract essentially becomes the Phil Pedal contract just for an extended period of time. Not too bad, and especially for a guy that definitely um, would definitely improve your team a lot. 23 points, 10 goals, 13 assists in 38 games played. His faceoff percentage over 50%. He wins faceoffs, and he could play on the wing if you need him to. He could slot in the top six if, people are, if players are struggling. Corsi, always above 50%, except for that very small sample size uh, in his first year with Tampa Bay. Yanni Gord would be such a great player to bring in here, which I'd be absolutely in love with. And now we're going to pull up one of his teammates because I completely forgot him. That is Jared McCann. Jared McCann, I would be absolutely all over if I could. Uh, if I'm the Rangers, I'd be all over him. Would he cost a lot? Yes. Uh, will it be hard to resign him because he's an RFA? Yes, but... 30 points in 41 games played. Uh, defensively, he is out of this world. Face-off percentage could be improved. That's for sure. Even strength, Corsi, above 50, which you like. But defensively, he is unreal. And he could slot in on your penalty kill. He definitely solves that problem. He would be the perfect, perfect, perfect third-line center. My God, would I love Jeremy Ken. And if you even want to, you could throw him on the right wing with either Zabanjad and Kreider or Strom and Panarin. So I, that would be a name I'd absolutely love. And another name that I completely forgot that we're going to talk about is Riley Smith. Vegas has to make a deal because when Jack Eichel is healthy, they have to clear up cap. Uh, Riley Smith, I'd absolutely be in love with. He is definitely... I know center is the sexy pick with Ranger fans for what we want, but... Riley Smith would be unreal. He's played with Gallant before, so he understands the system. Wouldn't take long for him to adjust to a system, unlike most of these other guys. You like that. You like the 30 points in 44 games for 12 goals and 18 assists. You absolutely love the Corsi on even strength. You absolutely love it. 56.4%. Yeah, uh, the even strength problems are solved right in front of your eyes if you go out and get a Riley Smith. Absolutely no worries there. Defensively, he's pretty solid. He's got he's been the Selkie conversation before. You could probably throw him on the penalty kill. Riley Smith would be un freaking real, especially alongside Zabanajad and Kreider. I know you want Lafreniere getting the top six minutes, but if you get a guy like Riley Smith, I'm willing to sacrifice it. Riley Smith is probably higher on my list. I just wanted to put him in before I forgot to uh, forgot to include him. Riley Smith, man, he might be the top guy that I want after looking at these numbers. Well, outside of the last name that we're going to talk about. Next, Lawson Krause. This is a name that I think goes under the radar with a lot of Ranger fans. He is a winger. That's part of why he's a, he's a left winger, too. That's also part of why. But 21 points uh, for 11 goals and 10 assists in 44 games played. This is a guy that you could slot in on the top six or the bottom six, and he'll succeed. Corsi, it's almost 50% on Arizona. So that is solid. He would definitely be an upgrade over Dryden Hunt or Phil Pedal on that third line on the left side. I would absolutely love a guy like Lawson Krause, and he wouldn't cost much, which is also what I love about him. I'm not sure how much term is left on that deal. We could quickly check, but it is a very affordable contract if he does have term on that deal, which, no, he doesn't, but he is an RFA also. I'd love Lawson Krause on the team. 
I'm not sure how he is defensively, so there is that. Uh, but yeah, next, Arturi Lekkinen, another guy that I would absolutely love. Him defensively, I know he is a monster defensively. Possession metrics, I always on this by accident. 53% Corsi for even strength. You absolutely love that. You, the 19 points in 41 games you could work with, and I feel like he would play a lot, a lot better with Barkley Goudreau, and he'll actually get the point totals up. He would be the, he would be such a great third line, um, third line player for us. He doesn't, uh, he's out of center, obviously, which kind of sucks, but to throw him on the left side, I'd love Lekkanen. I would absolutely love him. And defensively, on the penalty kill, you can't go wrong. Next, another name that's kind of snuck into the rumors is Andrew Kopp, and that is because Winnipeg is not necessarily in contention by any means. I don't know what his contract looks like, which we'll quickly see. He does have one year left. I thought he had uh, a couple years left, but Andrew Kopp would be definitely an ideal name because, one, he's only, what, He's only 27, which you could say he probably won't be more than a 40-point guy, but who the hell knows if he does play higher than third line mids. This is the definition, though, of a third line center when you look at him. Face off percentage through the roof. Possession metrics, uh, Corsi 4, even strength through the roof. I would be all over Andrew Kopp if I'm the Rangers. I would be all over him. He is the definition of a third line center, and he would be so, so perfect. What it's going to cost to get him, I have no idea. It's probably going to cost a lot, but man, now that I'm looking at Andrew Kopp, the Rangers got to get a guy like this if they could. He is absolutely unreal in the faceoff dot. He's the definition of a third line guy, and I'd absolutely be all over him. Next, another name that has kind of snuck in because of rumors, Brock Besser, but he is only 24 years old. I don't see the Rangers making this one work at all. Uh, would he be perfect? A thousand freaking percent on that right side. You would have your Pavel Buchnevich replacement right in front of your damn eyes. Uh, 24 points in 40 games. Not the most ideal, but if you play him with the bad chat and Kreider, like I've been saying with a lot of these guys, unreal. Horsey 4, unreal. His shot is unreal. His shooting percentage in the past, it has been very high, which is something that I would absolutely love considering, like I said, the shooting percentage with most of the guys on this team are very low. Uh, in terms of how much he has left on his deal, one year, is it going to be doable to get Brock Besser? Probably not, but I'd absolutely love him. Next, we get to the two names that have been talked about the most. Tomas Hurdle. So, Hurdle, we know the deal. Face-off percentage, 53%. 38 points for 22 goals and 16 assists. Uh, possession metrics, 4C4 and even strength is just below 50%, but that could definitely improve. But Hurdle is a goal scorer, which is something that, like I said, we need. That shooting percentage, I mean, just look at it. Just freaking look at it. This would be a guy that would slot in so perfectly on this team because he actually shoots the damn puck where you'd play him you kind of have flexibility here if you want to play him on the second line you can move strom to the wing honestly which strom might be better there either way and you could throw hurdle in the center of that line and my god would that line be deadly with and there and strom just feeding the puck to hurdle just beautiful pass them oh my god you could throw him on the third line if you want to with his former teammate barkley goudreau you have a lot of flexibility, or maybe you go out and get him and then a Riley Smith. Riley Smith is here. Okay, your third line then is Lafreniere, Thomas Hurdle, Barkley Goudreau. Sign me the fuck up. Sorry for swearing there because I have an all video, but I'd love that. I'd absolutely love that. Hurdle, big name, but not the biggest name because last but not least, this video has been long, so I'm trying to go through this somewhat quickly. Last but not least, the biggest name, in my opinion, Joe freaking pavelski i would die would die for this guy to be a ranger 
Shooting percentage, off the charts. Points, above a point per game. 49 apples. Um, 19 genos. Face-off percentage, 54.6%. When was the last time his face-off percentage was below 50%? Oh, never. What has he done? He's been on a Stanley Cup run with San Jose. Uh, he is a leader. He's been a captain before with San Jose. Corsi 40 even strength. Laughable how good it is. 55.4% there. On freaking real. What does he do? Oh, yeah. He's just been in the Selkie conversation a few times. So defensively, oh, he, he's okay. What, what else could he do? Oh, he could go in front of the net on the second power play unit and just tip pucks. He could be on that second power play unit and be your Chris Kreider there. You have Chris Kreider on your top unit, Joe Pavelski on your second unit, and fuck, go ahead and throw Panarin then on that second unit. You put Lafreniere on that top unit and you could start to utilize both your power play units more. Sign me the hell up for Joe Pavelski on the Rangers. Just sign me the hell up. This is another guy you could either put, you could probably put him at center, move strong the wing. You could put him on the wing there if you want to. Although with that face on percentage, how could you? He could be a third line center. And what is he looking for? A Stanley Cup ring before he ends his career. Because he is 37. You could probably resign him at a somewhat cheap price. I throw all the chips at Joe Pavelski. I don't care that he's 37 because he is a fine wine he is only getting better right now with age, it seems like. It is unreal. I throw all the chips to get him. He is definitely my number one trade target if I'm the Rangers, and he should be all of yours too. But that is going to be it for the video. Let me know your trade targets. Uh, go ahead and rank, I guess, if you want to. Give me your top five or top 10 trade targets that you'd like the Rangers to get, both at forward and defense. Let me know down in the comment. Let's do top 10 forwards uh, from you guys in the comments. A top five defense trade targets. Comment that down below uh, just to get a conversation going down there. Leave a like, of course, on the video. Subscribe if you guys are new. But thank you guys so much for watching. This was a very long video. But uh, I wanted to do a deep dive into this of what would, I, what would be ideal fits for the Rangers here. But I'm going to end it here. Enough rambling for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.